Sir Alexander Fleming, the 6th of August 1881 to the 11th of March 1955, was a Scottish physician, microbiologist, and pharmacologist. His best-known discoveries are the enzyme lysozyme in 1923 and the world's first antibiotic substance benzylpenicillin penicillin G from the mold Penicillium notatum in 1928, for which he shared the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1945 with Howard Florey and Ernst Boris Chain. He wrote many articles on bacteriology, immunology, and chemotherapy. Fleming was knighted for his scientific achievements in 1944. In 1999, he was named in Time magazine's list of the 100 most important people of the 20th century. In 2002, he was chosen in the BBC's television poll for determining the 100 greatest Britons, and in 2009, he was also voted third greatest Scot in an opinion poll conducted by STV, behind only Robert Burns and William Wallace. Topic: <laughs> Early life and education. Born on 6 August 1881 at Lockfield Farm near Darville, in Ayrshire, Scotland, Alexander was the third of four children of farmer Hugh Fleming 1816 from his second marriage to Grace Sterling Morton 1848 the daughter of a neighbouring farmer. Hugh Fleming had four surviving children from his first marriage. He was 59 at the time of his second marriage, and died when Alexander was seven. Fleming went to Loden Moore School and Darville School, and earned a two year scholarship to Kilmarnock Academy before moving to London, where he attended the Royal Polytechnic Institution. After working in a shipping office for four years, the 20 year old Alexander Fleming inherited some money from an uncle, John Fleming. His elder brother, Tom, was already a physician and suggested to him that he should follow the same career, and so in 1903, the younger Alexander enrolled at St. Mary's Hospital Medical School in Paddington. He qualified with an MBBS degree from the school with distinction in 1906. Fleming had been a private in the London Scottish Regiment of the Volunteer Force since 1900, and had been a member of the Rifle Club at the medical school. The captain of the club, wishing to retain Fleming in the team, suggested that he join the research department at St. Mary's, where he became assistant bacteriologist to Sir Almroth Wright, a pioneer in vaccine therapy and immunology. In 1908, he gained a BSc degree with gold medal in bacteriology, and became a lecturer at St. Mary's until 1914. Fleming served throughout World War I as a captain in the Royal Army Medical Corps, and was mentioned in dispatches. He and many of his colleagues worked in battlefield hospitals at the Western Front in France. In 1918 he returned to St. Mary's Hospital, where he was elected Professor of Bacteriology of the University of London in 1928. In 1951 he was elected the Rector of the University of Edinburgh for a term of three years. Research Work before penicillin During World War I, Fleming witnessed the death of many soldiers from sepsis resulting from infected wounds. Antiseptics, which were used at the time to treat infected wounds, often worsened the injuries. In an article he submitted for the medical journal The Lancet during World War I, Fleming described an ingenious experiment, which he was able to conduct as a result of his own glass-blowing skills, in which he explained why antiseptics were killing more soldiers than infection itself during World War I. Antiseptics worked well on the surface, but deep wounds tended to shelter anaerobic bacteria from the antiseptic agent, and antiseptics seemed to remove beneficial agents produced that protected the patients in these cases at least as well as they removed bacteria, and did not nothing to remove the bacteria that were out of reach. Sir Almroth Wright strongly supported Fleming's findings, but despite this, most army physicians over the course of the war continued to use antiseptics even in cases where this worsened the condition of the patients. At St. Mary's Hospital Fleming continued his investigations into antibacterial substances. Testing the nasal secretions from a patient with a heavy cold, he found that nasal mucus had an inhibitory effect on bacterial growth. This was the first recorded discovery of lysozyme, an enzyme present in many secretions including tears, saliva, skin, hair and nails as well as mucus. Although he was able to obtain larger amounts of lysozyme from egg whites, the enzyme was only effective against small counts of harmless bacteria, and therefore had little therapeutic potential. Topic. Accidental discovery 
One sometimes finds, what one is not looking for. When I woke up just after dawn on September 28, 1928, I certainly didn't plan to revolutionize all medicine by discovering the world's first antibiotic, or bacteria killer. But I suppose that was exactly what I did. By 1927, Fleming had been investigating the properties of Staphylococci. He was already well known from his earlier work, and had developed a reputation as a brilliant researcher, but his laboratory was often untidy. On 3 September 1928, Fleming returned to his laboratory having spent August on holiday with his family. Before leaving, he had stacked all his cultures of Staphylococci on a bench in a corner of his laboratory. On returning, Fleming noticed that one culture was contaminated with a fungus, and that the colonies of Staphylococci immediately surrounding the fungus had been destroyed, whereas other Staphylococci colonies farther away were normal, famously remarking, That's funny. Fleming showed the contaminated culture to his former assistant Merlin Price, who reminded him, That's how you discovered lysozyme. Fleming grew the mold in a pure culture and found that it produced a substance that killed a number of disease causing bacteria. He identified the mold as being from the genus Penicillium, and, after some months of calling it, mold juice, named the substance it released penicillin on 7 March 1929. The laboratory in which Fleming discovered and tested penicillin is preserved as the Alexander Fleming Laboratory Museum in St. Mary's Hospital, Paddington. He investigated its positive antibacterial effect on many organisms, and noticed that it affected bacteria such as Staphylococci and many other gram-positive pathogens that cause scarlet fever, pneumonia, meningitis and diphtheria, but not typhoid fever or paratyphoid fever, which are caused by gram-negative bacteria, for which he was seeking a cure at the time. It also affected Neisseria gonorrhoeae, which causes gonorrhea, although this bacterium is gram-negative. Fleming published his discovery in 1929, in the British Journal of Experimental Pathology, but little attention was paid to his article. Fleming continued his investigations, but found that cultivating penicillium was quite difficult, and that after having grown the mold, it was even more difficult to isolate the antibiotic agent. Fleming's impression was that because of the problem of producing it in quantity, and because its action appeared to be rather slow, penicillin would not be important in treating infection. Fleming also became convinced that penicillin would not last long enough in the human body in vivo to kill bacteria effectively. Many clinical tests were inconclusive, probably because it had been used as a surface antiseptic. In the 1930s, Fleming's trials occasionally showed more promise, but Fleming largely abandoned penicillin work, leaving Howard Florey and Ernst Boris Chain at the Radcliffe Infirmary in Oxford to take up research to mass-produce it, with funds from the U.S. and British governments. They started mass production after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. By D-Day in 1944, enough penicillin had been produced to treat all the wounded in the Allied forces. Topic. Purification and stabilization In Oxford, Ernst Boris Chain and Edward Abraham were studying the molecular structure of the antibiotic. Abraham was the first to propose the correct structure of penicillin. Shortly after the team published its first results in 1940, Fleming telephoned Howard Florey, Chain's head of department, to say that he would be visiting within the next few days. When Chain heard that Fleming was coming, he remarked, Good God! I thought he was dead. Norman Heatley suggested transferring the active ingredient of penicillin back into water by changing its acidity. This produced enough of the drug to begin testing on animals. There were many more people involved in the Oxford team, and at one point the entire Dunn School was involved in its production. After the team had developed a method of purifying penicillin to an effective first stable form in 1940, several clinical trials ensued, and their amazing success inspired the team to develop methods for mass production and mass distribution in 1945. Fleming was modest about his part in the development of penicillin, describing his fame as the Fleming myth and he praised Florey and Chain for transforming the laboratory curiosity into a practical drug. Fleming was the first to discover the properties of the active substance, giving him the privilege of naming it, penicillin. He also kept, grew, and distributed the original mold for 12 years, and continued until 1940 to try to get help from any chemist who had enough skill to make penicillin. But Sir Henry Harris said in 1998, Without Fleming, no chain, without chain, no Flory, without Flory, no Heatley, without Heatley, no penicillin. 
Topic: <inaudible> Antibiotics. Fleming's accidental discovery and isolation of penicillin in September 1928 marks the start of modern antibiotics. Before that, several scientists had published or pointed out that mold or penicillium sp. were able to inhibit bacterial growth, and even to cure bacterial infections in animals. Ernest de Chesney in 1897 in his thesis, "...contribution to the study of vital competition in microorganisms, antagonism between molds and microbes." Or also Clodomiro Picado Twite, whose work at the Institut Pasteur in 1923 on the inhibiting action of fungi of the penicillin sp. genre in the growth of Staphylococci drew little interest from the directors of the Institute at the time. Fleming was the first to push these studies further by isolating the penicillin, and by being motivated enough to promote his discovery at a larger scale. Fleming also discovered very early that bacteria developed antibiotic resistance whenever too little penicillin was used or when it was used for too short a period. Almroth Wright had predicted antibiotic resistance even before it was noticed during experiments. Fleming cautioned about the use of penicillin in his many speeches around the world. On 26 June 1945, he made the following cautionary statements, the microbes are educated to resist penicillin and a host of penicillin fast organisms is bred out. In such cases the thoughtless person playing with penicillin is morally responsible for the death of the man who finally succumbs to infection with the penicillin-resistant organism. I hope this evil can be averted. Quote, he cautioned not to use penicillin unless there was a properly diagnosed reason for it to be used, and that if it were used, never to use too little, or for too short a period, since these are the circumstances under which bacterial resistance to antibiotics develops. Topic myths The popular story of Winston Churchill's father paying for Fleming's education after Fleming's father saved young Winston from death is false. According to the biography, Penicillin Man, Alexander Fleming and the Antibiotic Revolution by Kevin Brown, Alexander Fleming, in a letter to his friend and colleague André Gracia, described this as a wondrous fable, nor did he save Winston Churchill himself during World War II. Churchill was saved by Lord Moran, using sulfonamides, since he had no experience with penicillin, when Churchill fell ill in Carthage in Tunisia in 1943. The Daily Telegraph and the Morning Post on 21 December 1943 wrote that he had been saved by penicillin. He was saved by the new sulfonamide drug sulfapyridine, known at the time under the research code M&B 693, discovered and produced by May & Baker Ltd., Dagenham, Essex, a subsidiary of the French group Rhone Poulenc. In a subsequent radio broadcast, Churchill referred to the new drug as this admirable M&B. It is highly probable that the correct information about the sulfonamide did not reach the newspapers because, since the original sulfonamide antibacterial, Prontosil, had been a discovery by the German laboratory Bayer, and as Britain was at war with Germany at the time, it was thought better to raise British morale by associating Churchill's cure with a British discovery, penicillin. Topic awards and honors Fleming's discovery of penicillin changed the world of modern medicine by introducing the age of useful antibiotics. Penicillin has saved, and is still saving, millions of people around the world. The laboratory at St. Mary's Hospital, where Fleming discovered penicillin, is home to the Fleming Museum, a popular London attraction. His alma mater, St. Mary's Hospital Medical School, merged with Imperial College London in 1988. The Sir Alexander Fleming Building on the South Kensington campus was opened in 1998, where his son Robert and his great granddaughter Claire were presented to the Queen. It is now one of the main preclinical teaching sites of the Imperial College School of Medicine. His other alma mater, the Royal Polytechnic Institution, now the University of Westminster, has named one of its student halls of residence Alexander Fleming House, which is near to Old Street. Topic personal life On 24 December 1915, Fleming married a trained nurse, Sarah Marion McElroy of Killala, County Mayo, Ireland. Their only child, Robert Fleming 1924 became a general medical practitioner. After his first wife's death in 1949, Fleming married Dr. Amalia Koutsori Voyurikas, a Greek colleague at St. Mary's. On 9 April 1953, she died in 1986. From 1921 until his death in 1955, Fleming owned a country home in Barton Mills, Suffolk. Topic death On of March 1955, Fleming died at his home in London of a heart attack. He is buried in St. Paul's Cathedral. 
Topic see also People on Scottish Banknotes Topic References Topic Further reading The Life of Sir Alexander Fleming, Jonathan Cape, 1959. Morwa, André. Nobel Lectures, The Physiology or Medicine 1942–1962, Elsevier Publishing Company, Amsterdam, 1964 An Outline History of Medicine. London, Butterworths, 1985. Rhodes, Philip. The Cambridge Illustrated History of Medicine. Cambridge, England, Cambridge University Press, 1996. Porter, Roy, ed. Penicillin Man, Alexander Fleming and the Antibiotic Revolution, Stroud, Sutton, 2004. Brown, Kevin. Alexander Fleming, The Man and the Myth, Oxford University Press, Oxford, 1984. McFarlane, Gwyn. Fleming, Discoverer of Penicillin, Ludovici, Lawrence J., 1952. The Penicillin Man, The Story of Sir Alexander Fleming, Lutterworth Press, 1957 Roland, John. Topic. External links Media related to Alexander Fleming at Wikimedia Commons Alexander Fleming Obituary Alexander Fleming Biography Time, 29 March 1999, Bacteriologist Alexander Fleming Some places and memories related to Alexander Fleming Newspaper clippings about Alexander Fleming in the 20th Century Press Archives of the German National Library of Economics ZBW.